Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to share with you about a theorem which is called a Chebyshev theorem. And the statement of the theorem says that the probability that any random variable x will assume a value within k standard deviation of its mean is at least 1 minus 1 upon k square. Or we can also state it like the proportion of any data set that falls within k standard deviation of mean is at least 1 minus 1 upon k square. And you can observe that whatever is being discussed, it is written in terms of this inequality. So this is also called a Chebyshev inequality. And let's try to understand that whatever is written in this inequality, what it is conveying. So first, when it is saying probability of any random variable, so what we are getting information out of it that even if it is a discrete or continuous, we don't know. So maybe the distribution is unknown. Then also this theorem can be used. So if there is no clue about the distribution and you know that uh, we are looking for some kind of probability. So where it is implemented, it is saying that the random variable can assume a value within k standard deviation. So if I say k standard deviation means k times sigma of its means means from mean at least 1 minus 1 upon k square means either this or more than that. So there is a data set and we know about its average. So mean and standard deviation must be available then only this can this theorem can be used. So let's say the data set average value is somewhere here. So if I say that there are one step of the standard deviation on the left hand side and right hand side. So it will be somewhere here. We can write down uh, mu minus sigma we reach here mu plus sigma will reach there again if you take a two steps of a sigma this side and the other side so we will see that the entry might be somewhere 2 plus sorry mu plus 2 sigma and this will be mu minus 2 sigma so all the way this theorem is saying that if you are looking for the random variable within the range of k deviation from its mean. So from this mean, if I am taking a mu minus k sigma and if I am talking about mu plus k sigma, if this is the range and I want to find out what is the probability of all the x which lies within that range, then this theorem says that I won't give you an exact value of the probability, but I can give you one guarantee that your probability must be uh, either 1 upon 1 minus k square it can be more than it so it gives you the lower bound the lower at least minimum value it can provide us and it can extend to any value so even if we are not getting an exact value of the probability but we get uh, some clue now let us try to find out this expression for a certain value of k since k is greater than 1 because if k is equals to 1 it becomes 0 so we don't get any information out, out of it so it will not solve the purpose and if k is smaller than 1 then it become negative and probability can't be negative so we have to maintain the value of k to be greater than 1 then only it is applicable so for example let us first identify this values 1 minus 1 upon k square for different values of k when k is 2 we are observing when we simplify it 1 minus 1 upon 4 we get 3 by 4 that means this value will give us in points 0.75 or if we see it in the percentage wise it is 75% and similarly for k is equals to 3 when we simplify this expression 1 minus 1 upon k square we will get 1 minus 1 by 9 and that is coming out to be in a ratio 8 by 9 and when we simplify as a decimal it is 0.889 or percentage wise we can write down 88.9 we can switch this decimal to two place ahead to get a percentage kind of data so similarly if we want to find out what happened for k is equals to 4 and we observe that 1 minus 1 upon k square for 4 is 1 minus 1 upon 16 and it turn up as a 15 by 16 and in decimal form we get a 0.9375 and it is 93.75 because within a one standard deviation we won't get any information so we will not talk about it and it is very trivial so let's say if we are uh, within a two standard deviation so within a two standard deviation means this interval 
right within a two standard deviation we saw that the random variable or you can say the data set uh, the probability of getting the data set between this range is 3 by 4 in terms of probability or percentage wise means 3 by 4 or more means it is not given if we see what happened for the three standard deviation and we observe we have already calculated that if we are looking for within this range that mean when we from the mean if we see the 3 3 standard deviation moves left and right side so we get that 88.9 percent or more right and similarly we saw that the last one which is within four standard deviation that means within this range will be 15 by 16 or you can say 93 or more or we can say 93.75 percent or more at least means it is telling us a lower value it can be more the the interval which we are interested to talk about must be symmetric on both side so that is a one point we have to take care so uh, what are the different way this can be expressed because we see this inequality in our statement of the theorem that probability can be between this range is always greater than or equals to 1 minus 1 upon k square uh, can we rewrite it in another form yes it can be written in this form where you can see that it is written in mod of x minus mu less than k sigma greater than equals to 1 minus 1 upon k square what does it mean because the same expression in, in this between two points we are saying that uh, we are talking about between these two points it means if we see distance wise so the distance of x that is a random variable from its mean anywhere it should be within k sigma then only we can calculate it via this formula right and uh, what happen if it goes more than it like what happen if it is happening so it is an other part of the entries which is not in the interval so what happen if it is more than k sigma that means what happen when it is somewhere here somewhere here that is outside this k uh, sigma deviations obviously we know that the total probability of the data set is 1 right and for that if we are looking for what is happening out of that bound in that case the probability will be 1 minus whatever probability we are getting within the data set within this interval or range set so when we simplify it 1 and 1 will get cancelled you get 1 upon k square so you can say that sum of these two entries equals to 1 so switch over to the problem solving to get a more insight of this use case of this theorem so i have taken a first example here and we can see that this example says that a random variable x has a mean mu and variance so even if variance is given in our formula we are using standard deviation so from here we are getting the value of sigma as a positive square root of a variance that is 3 and since they are also telling that it is unknown so how to find the probability lying between minus 4 to 20 so we can observe that if some mean is available standard deviation available we can at, at least get some information of the probability occurring of the data set between minus 4 to 20 so let us see how we can solve it in a simpler manner I have also presented everything on the number line because sometimes this can also give us an idea that what we are talking about here they gave us a mean value as a uh, 8 sorry mean as a 8 and they gave us that uh, the lower value of this range is minus 4 and upper value of the range is 20 so within this range of minus 4 to 20 what is what is the chances that how much probability of getting the data set within that or we can say random variable within that points so what we can do we can uh, use whatever is appropriate formula because we saw in the previous slide different way to express the probability so i am going to compare it with this expression which is mu minus sigma k less than x less than mu plus sigma k the value is always greater all equal to 1 minus 1 upon k square so when i will compare it with it these values it is a symmetric distance from both side of the mu so you can use any one of them to get a value of um, k so what i'm going to do is i am comparing with 20 so 20 is my upper bound of the range so i'll write down so here it is mu plus so mu is here 8 plus uh, k is equals to 3 so not k sigma is equals to 3 k we don't know 
sigma is equals to 3 and when we will simplify so we are getting 3 times k is equals to 12 and from here k can be retrieved that is coming out to be 4 so we saw that for this particular question k is equals to 4 so when k is equals to 4 I know that this value will also greater than or equals to 1 minus 1 upon k square so we will see that when I plug in the value of k here we will get the answer so let's see what happen when I plug in the value of k that means 1 minus 1 upon k square is let us simplify then I'll write down in front of the probability and we'll see 1 minus 1 upon 16 and we have already discussed this case of k previous slide so it will be 15 by 16 so it means it is saying the probability of getting this value is either greater than or equals to 15 by 16 or in point wise we can say 0 0.93 Seven, five. if somebody is asking in terms of percentage we can say 93.75 percentage now the first part is done let us see the second part and second part is talking about the outer entries of the data set so how we can you uh, solve it so whenever you are looking for probability that the x minus 8 is more than or equals to 6 what will be the chances we know that this is less than or equals to 1 upon k square so first of all I will compare it with this uh, inequality and from here what we can identify let's see that this 6 is same as sigma k so we know that here what is mu mu is 8 sigma is 3 because we are following the same problem or same data so what we can see that k sigma is equals to 3 oh sorry 6 k is unknown still and sigma is 3 so we are getting k to be 2 so it means this value of 1 by k square is what this value 1 by k square is 1 upon 4 1 over 4 means 0.25 that means 25 percent so from here we can figure out that the probability of random variable which is away from this thing and greater than 6 value the probability of getting this situation is either less than or equals to 0 0.25 or you can say 25 percent so I hope via these two questions you get an idea so what we covered so far through this example we covered that that if you are giving me the range or if you are giving me uh, the any kind of entries I can provide you what is the probability means we can find out the probability second example I have taken where the probability is given in terms of percentage and I want to find the range so let's read the question this question says the average score in a mathematics exam is 84 with the standard deviation 4 what we need to find out find the range find the range of marks between which at least 75 percent of the students scored that means what we are looking for we are looking for what is the chances of the probability that what should I get in data set if x is a let's say x is a marks of uh, in mathematics so we can say that I am looking for what is the range that if I see 75 percent in the probability because we write a probability in terms of uh, uh, 0 to 1 so if I convert it into the decimal it will be 0 0.75 which means I am looking for what is the range of the marks that I should discuss that the data entries or the marks entries are either greater than or more than 0 0.75 right so three-fourths of the data we are looking for or more data range if we see the average marks of the that subject is 84 and the standard deviation in that marks is 4 so it means here mu let us write down all the required value mu is equals to 84 sigma is equals to 4 and if I start comparing so you can see that here the prob I can compare it with that inequality where we can see that mu minus k times sigma is less than x less than mu plus k times sigma is greater than or equals to 1 minus 1 upon k square so when we see this situation mu is given sigma is given only if k is available we can plug in and we get an idea so what we can do whenever uh, we need to find out range and the probability is given to us we can 
compare it with the appropriate inequality and we'll find out so I'll solve this expression so here we can say 1 minus 1 upon k square is equals to 0 0.75 this means 1 upon k square is equals to 0 0.25 and it means 1 upon k square so you can say k square is equals to 1 upon 0 0.25 and we are simplified k square is equals to 100 upon 25 and then it is equals to 4 so k square is 4 and k is a positive so it means k turned out to be 2 so we observe that I'm going to now plug in the value here so mu is mu is here 84 k turn out to be 2 and sigma is 4 less than x less than mu is again 84 plus 2 times 4 and we will find out what is the probability which is greater than or equals to 0 0.75 so when I will write on in the last line that the range is 84 minus 8 is 76. 84 plus 8 is 92. Greater the student can score 75% or more. So I hope via these two examples you have gotten an idea what I covered in this second example I covered that that when the probability or the percentage wise information is available and we are looking for some bounded answer so we can calculate it with the help of the Chebyshev inequality so thank you